Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls. And welcome to this, another brand new day. And I am trying something new and different because everything looked pretty good with my recording my vlogs off of the PS4. It looks nice. And so what I'm trying today is I'm recording commentary over gameplay for a vlog on my PS4. As soon as this is done, I'm going to have to render it because it's not going to save the commentary track until, you know, I render the video. And then I'm going to copy that all over onto a flash drive, which I have plenty of. You know, I've gathered computer equipment through the years. And then I'm going to copy the video file onto the drive, bring it over to my system, copy it over, bring it into my video editor, and then I'm going to do some editing on that. So it should be pretty good. Now, I'm not going to be able to... Well, yeah, I've got my... i got stuff right here. So I, I even moved the camera off of my console monitor because I have a monitor for console stuff and a monitor for, for, com for computer stuff. And I put it next to my webcam so I can even do my, my, my thanking of people here. And that's a good thing. Definitely a good thing. Now, the past two nights, I have gone on seven-mile round-trip walkies to Walmart and back. So I have, I have been doing rather well on that exercise front. Now, the, there's good news and bad news, of course. Even with the amount of cannabis that I take in, which lately hasn't been a ton because I don't have, like, money, you buy what you can. If I go walking, the it's kind of a 50-50 coin toss on whether or not it's really going to inflame the nerves of my back and my legs. And remember, I've got back injuries, I've got nerve damage, I've got all sorts of issues that make walking and such difficult. And so, off times, like two nights ago, when I went on a seven-mile walk and came back, I had to go to bed early. I, I couldn't sit here the inflamed nerves of my back and my legs it was like physical torture just sitting the anxiety physical anxiety of my legs and my back was awful so i had to not do that i had to go to bed now last night i was able to do the seven mile walkies and when i came back no issues so you can't really tell when it's going to happen. It happens on the six mile walkies too. It's not just the seven mile walkies. Thumbs up. But last night worked out well. I'm really, really, really behind on watching videos and I'm trying to catch up as best I can with the single tasking on the PlayStation 4 and the difficulty of getting it to do some such. And it's, I am behind. Because you, when you're rendering anything on that, you can't do anything but that. It's single tasking. It turns the whole thing into a rendering factory as it renders your video. So all you can do is wait. Thumbs up for that. <clears throat> So I'm trying to pick up, trying to catch up, and it's fun. It's good. Definitely a fun thing. <laughs> Life is fun. Life is exciting. It's a good thing. I'm really, 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 really feeling myself continuing to... I was going to... It's not change, even though it is a change, and then I continue to wake up. But I'm becoming more the person that I used to be when I was much younger, when I was much more outgoing. I can't actually do it yet, physically. I'm, I'm going to do as much as I can. But up here, I continue to, to grow. I'm not the same person inside of my head that I was even a year ago. And I'm much different from the person that I was four or five years ago. I am completely different from the person that I was when I was married to my wife. Unfortunately, because of the depression and watching her get crushed and destroyed, that did a good job of really just driving me down deeper. But I've been waking up and becoming 
more of who I have been when I was younger, and it's it's a good thing. It's definitely a good thing. I'm glad to be waking up. Yeah, I wish I'd woke up, you know, before I had, like, realistically less than 20 years of life left. But rejoice with what you have. Don't be sad over what you've lost. So I'm just glad that I'm waking up and even if I can't get out into the world and do such like that, I gotta check over there to make sure I'm doing okay on time now. It's all still on the PlayStation monitor, so you're occasionally gonna see me do this to make sure everything's okay. But it's it's good. I can't remember what I was talking about before the interruption as I looked over there because that drove the thoughts out of my head. Thumbs up for that. Oh, I got way too much reflective light off of my screen. Let's see if that does that help any? Is that less? There, it looks less like there's a spotlight being shown directly onto my face. My apologies. <sighs> Past that though, still just thinking on my fiction stuff. I've thought more with the extrapolation to try and come up with how the, the things are now. Oddly, oddly. I mean, not so much oddly. I've mentioned before multidimensional beings and such as some of the races that the greater cosmic horrors will, as they funnel downward to smaller and our level, they use allied races and such like that. I've mentioned multidimensional beings. Well, if you wanted to get to that, you have to extrapolate back to see what these are. So I have figured that because we can't see it from inside of a universe and own, we can't really visualize what this means. But on an individual universe, and I, it makes much more sense for me to call them own because that's what we are in the context of the stories there. But with that, there are pressures on each individual universe and you get like aneurysms. Just like on our blood vessels, if you have too much pressure inside and a weak spot in your blood vessel, it balloons. It gets a neck and then balloons outward. Well, each individual universe has anywhere from zero to a thousand ungana. Ungana. God, it, it, it's so hard for me to get the proper accents done. I can only imagine what it's like for other people to try and pronounce it, even if you do try. But with the Ungana, this is where the inside pressure of the universe bubbles out with a neck and then boom, into a bubble. <clears throat> it's still a part of the universe, of course, but it is a broken and fractured reflection of the original universe. Now, if we, oh, my nose is just itchy. Now, if we traveled through the neck and into there, we could still live. The world would be strange. The people, odd. <clears throat> but just like us, they still live, love, reproduce, die. It is just a broken and fractured reflection. Different, but to them, it looks just like this, and we're the weird ones. Now about 10% of those have further aneurysms and bubbles and you know 10% of those until it can go out like four or five bubbles before it stops. And each one is slightly more broken and fractured. About two bubbles inward is about as far as we could go safely. It is not that the inhabitants would be hostile, they're not. It is just we would be unable to understand and see the world for what it really is. It would be like if aliens came down to our planet during our annual wood chipper festival and they kept throwing themselves into the wood chippers and we're trying to stop them. To them they look like fluffy cats. They just want to pet the cats. But we get to see what's really happening and they're tossing themselves into wood chippers because you can't perceive properly what's really there. It's extremely dangerous. Now there are the Unganu, which is instead of the pressure bubbling outward from the universe, these ones burrow inward. 
same things, except based more along the concept of there are science fiction writers who postulate that if we got into a situation where we could travel around the universe and we met other races and there were other races to meet, that there are oxygen breathers like us. We have a, a you know, like a, a brotherhood, a fraternity. We have something in common. We, we, we evolve on planets that have to have a certain atmosphere, that have to have a certain level of oxygen. We share, even if just philosophically, a bond oxygen breathers do and there are those races that grow on like gas giants we would be unable to relate to them at all because we live on relatively low gravity planets these are creatures that live on gas giants where the gravity and pressure is intense you can't live down near the core you've got to float upward where the pressure and gravity is well, the gravity is the same, but the pressure is less. So you've got to stay buoyant up here, and it's there's going to be massive storms. So anything that evolves in an environment where you're, it's not oxygen, it's not warm, it, they don't live on land, what sort of technology would they have? What sort of up here would they have? We would be... <clears throat> There's nothing for us to relate to. How would we interact on anything but a hostile level? That is what the Unganu are like. Hostile, inimical, violent, dangerous. But just like everybody, if you come across these beings, you know, good 99, not well 999 out of a thousand will be hostile and aggressively so that one in a thousand might be neutral and that would be nice now some of these beings because of the differences you know it's for a broken and fractured reflection some of these people in both directions, the Ungana and the Unganu, can grab the bottleneck figuratively, drag it to where they are, and step through it. Because it's still a part of the same universe, is there's just that bottleneck, but they have the mental ability to grab it and pull it in front of themselves, which of course is not a physical thing, it's just they're able to make the bottleneck and then they can pass through whether they go outward or inward so thumbs up for that so I'm still thinking still working still coming up with the world stuff there was more things I've got I want this person to the main character of the story I'm not quite sure if it'll be happy or sad so I don't want it to be Tammy but I've got a from a point of view of one of the people <clears throat> I figure in the world that the Tammy character with her the world is going insane around her the anxiety rates of anxiety are, are going sky high <clears throat> worldwide suicide rates are going up people are going insane there are there's a worldwide manhunt for a Cody rain and an Angoka that appears to be some sort of mind-controlled death cult because people who are normal will suddenly start chanting the names of the two leaders of this death cult and just go out and kill. Now I figure that for people the way we had to evolve, the way we had to grow, the way our psyches are, all the stuff that is in us, all the stuff that is true is not good or bad it helped us live this long and this is stuff that I really believe that, that we don't have a level plane of our emotions it's slightly tipped like this give somebody a push and they can more easily naturally flow down to the negative emotions these are the emotions like outrage anger these are their own reward they feel good 
it's easy to flow down into that direction and if you're being nudged without even realizing you're being nudged you can find yourself down there and further before you even know it but some people one out of a hundred instead of when they're nudged instead of flowing downward actually does go no and claws upward this direction ah itchy upper lip double checking my stuff so <laughs> oh i gotta hurry here so in this world of course everyone's being nudged and tipped by kadiron's interest in the uh, the previous well in it there's pressure and heat reality is bending there's no ill will it's just with the attention being given here the heat is coming over here and doing damage as things naturally flow the interest goes this direction our universe well tammy's universe goes this way and then things cool off reality heals but i got the idea of this person who was absolutely terrified because now they're dreaming of the name Koderan and Angoka just like those people on TV are they being mind controlled they don't want to hurt anyone they don't want to kill anyone but then when they go to sleep they can't sleep long because the nightmares wake them up Kadiran and Angoka those two people on the TV so I gotta see where that goes now I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments on my community tab and I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. It is arranged because even though I count in American, nope, <laughs> American Sign Language because of my depression more, I have trouble. So if I mispronounce a username, <coughs> no disrespect is intended. I'm an American English speaker and uh, I can't even remember what else I say. So let me call up my Chrome. We have Mini Gerard, thank you so very much. Lewis Griffin, greatly appreciated. We have Stormy, thumbs up and thank you. Confused Owl, greatly appreciated. Carl Cash, greatly appreciated. Kathy Kitzkat, thumbs up. Young Prince, greatly appreciated. David Hurst, thumbs up and thank you. Shania R, greatly appreciated, thumbs up. Trahuman, thank you very, very much. We have Carol Lemon Grab, always good to see you in the comments. Thumbs up and thank you very much. Stephen Blanchard, thank you for the info. And we have Putum Deratito, I don't know how that would be pronounced, but thank you very much. And Elder Wolf 569, thumbs up and thank you. Good ideas all. Darian Hale, thumbs up and thank you. John Ali, <laughs> and then we have King Killer, greatly appreciated. Rad Trevor TV, thumbs up and thank you. Colin Reisner, greatly appreciated. Little Leah, thumbs up. We have Barry Cool, that's very cool. And Ozan Eans, thumbs up and thank you. And then we have Ben Hulet, greatly appreciated. Tall Dude, one, two, three, good to see you in the comments. And Ali Shabiri, thumbs up and thank you. Each and every one of you, you get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. <coughs> checking my thing over there. I'm really running out of time. If you could check out my various links, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, NearlySeniorCitizen.com. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. Now, if you cannot, if you do want to help out, but you don't want to send any money to that, I have a PayPal link down below. And if you want to support me without sending money, I also have an Amazon wish list link down below. That would be very cool if you could check that out. Do not feel obligated. I do not feel entitled and if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate i take all good wishes and i deposit them in the bank of my heart where i draw interest so thank you very much if you could toss me a like i do appreciate all the positive validation i get for my existence a definite thumbs up and of course if you could subscribe to the channel <coughs> and hit that bell that would be greatly appreciated. Definitely a thumbs up. I would understand if you did not wish to, but if you are down with it, I will do my best to keep you entertained from now to the literal end of time. Definitely a thumbs up. Well, I've got this video. I've got some other stuff coming up. That's all real good. I'm trying to rush it because things are, are getting kind of kind of tight here. So you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side, my friend. And that is a very good thing. A definite thumbs up.